grade 6 math number 4.3b multiply fractions cancel out to solve. This is part 2 of 4.3a. We talked about in the previous video how we multiply a numerator by a numerator and a denominator by a denominator to multiply fractions. If we have a whole number we can just put it over a 1 and turn it into a fraction. Then we can multiply with it. We can use the greatest common factors, the GCF, between numerators and denominators to cross divide. This way we're bringing the product to its lowest terms before we even start multiplying. I know this is kind of hard to see because I wrote over it, but it's 3 tenths times 5 ninths. And what we do is we cancel them out. The 3 and the 9 can work together and the 5 and the 10 can work together. There's one 3 in a 3 and there's three threes in a 9. So we cross out the 3, it becomes a 1. We cross out the 9, it becomes a 3. There's one 5 in a 5 and there's two 5s in a 10. That becomes a 1, that becomes a 2. We just multiply across now and 1 times 1 is 1 and 2 times 3 is 6. If we didn't do that and we had 3 tenths times 5 ninths, which is the original problem, we would have gone straight across and our product would have been 15 over 90. We would have hoped to know that 15 could fit easily into 90 and that we could divide by that to get the 1 6th. Most people would try 5 and they'd be reducing to lowest terms and driving themselves crazy. So by cross dividing this way and using the greatest common factor between the numerators and denominators, the cross numerators and cross denominators, we can cancel out and simplify before we even begin multiplying. I wanted to show you this. When we multiply by a fraction, what's happening, we're making smaller parts and more of them. If we have one whole bar and we multiply it by a half, we're going to get a half. It now becomes a half. If we multiply that half by a half, we now have a fourth. If we multiply the fourth by a half, it becomes an eighth. The eighth by a half becomes a sixteenth. A sixteenth by a half becomes this little thirty-second and a 32nd by a half becomes this little 64th, this tiny little piece here in purple. Can you see that? It's getting tinier and tinier. So each time we multiply the smaller fraction by a half, we're cutting it in half and making the pieces even smaller. If we had been multiplying by a fourth or a sixth, we would have been cutting it into fourths and sixths. See? So I'm going to show you what happens when we have five sixths times three fifths. I did it the old way and multiplied straight across and got 15 thirtieths, and that needs to be reduced to its lowest terms. 5, 6, we have a big bar here, and 5 out of the 6 are colored yellow. This is 5, 6 right here. 5, 6 of them are yellow. We're going to multiply it by 3 fifths. So what we're doing is we're turning the 5, 6 into fifths, and we're taking 3 of them. See? So 3 fifths of 5 sixths is half of the 6 sixths, the original 6 sixths. Is that something else? Here's the 15 thirtieths, that's half of the 6 sixths. So we had 5 sixths, and our denominator was a 6, but we wanted 3 fifths of them. So we didn't look at it as 6, we looked at it as fifths, and we took 3 of them right here which in the end is equal to half of the original 6 6 and that is why the answer is a half. If we canceled out the fives would have canceled each other out and become ones and the three and the six would have canceled out and become a, a one and a two and we would have had one times one is one and two times one is two and we would have had a half right away. Isn't that something how that happened? That's three-fifths of 5 6. I wanted to do this one in front of you and show you. If we have 2 thirds times 1 twelfth, we can do it the old way and do 2 times 1 is 2 over 36. And now we have to simplify this more and divide by 2 for each of them. 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 36 18 times, so we'd get 1 18th. Well, we also could have just cross multiplied. We could have said, okay, 
We have a 2 and a 12. There's one 2 here and six 2s here. Now what we have to do is 1 times 1 is 1, and 3 times 6 is 18, and we wouldn't have had to simplify. It would have been 1 18th as we did the equation. Isn't that something else? Fractions are so amazing. All right. This can also help you in dividing fractions. We're going to get into that in a few videos. So I hope you understand. I hope this helped you. And I hope this is going to make your work in the book a little easier or with your homework. And keep plugging, keep trying, keep up the good work, and I'll see you next video. Bye.